Sage Wanderer here, and um, I'm traveling about this week. I'm on the Oregon coast, and uh, I took along with me for some entertainment uh, an old guitar. And I made this video for you guys uh, about not going to the FEMA camp, and I played this old guitar. And many of you who are fans of this channel have heard me talk about the old Marine slash preacher uh, who also was uh, in Jerry Reed's band a many, many moon ago before he was famous, before Jerry Reed was famous. But this guitar belonged to my dad. And we purchased this guitar. I was with him. I was a little kid in 1975 or 1976. I think 75. We purchased this to replace his Gibson SG, which was stolen out of the church he pastored. And so with the insurance money, we purchased uh, this Gibson ES325. ES325. Everyone's familiar with the ES335. This is actually a very different guitar than the ES335. Now this guitar originally was purple, but now it has what they call a tobacco finish. This is because uh, after the old man retired from the ministry, he started smoking a pipe, and the pipe tobacco smoke seeped in through the case and colorized this beautiful guitar and made it this brown color now, this burgundy brown, but it used to be a purple color the color of the case matching the case so this guitar is quite different let me set this up where we can see just the guitar so this guitar is quite different than um, an ES335 for one thing this ES325 is thinner than the ES335 is about twice as thick so this guitar is quite a bit thinner than the ES335 and, um, but the body shape is real similar. You have the uh, single F hole here instead of the normal double F hole. And then you have uh, a thinner neck on this guitar. And if there's any Gibson experts out there who are looking at this and you want to contradict me or, or, or you know, teach me about it, I'm totally teachable. Tell me more about the old Marines guitar. I was with him when we bought it at a music store in Portland. I remember it was a sunny day. <laughs> I was a little kid. It was a big deal to get to go with Dad to buy this new guitar. So, um, but I believe here's what I know about this guitar after talking to a couple of Gibson guys. I won't call them experts, but they seem to know their stuff. And this remote doesn't need to be in the way. Nope, nothing here but this pretty girl. So, uh, what makes this different than a 335 besides being thinner and having a single F-hole? This has what's called mini humbuckers. So these are quite a bit smaller. I'm putting my hand down here to show you. Quite a bit smaller than a standard humbucker. Standard humbucker is quite a bit thicker and it comes out a little further. In fact, if you can see this black Bakelite mount that goes in this body, that that is actually the size of a humbucker pickup. So these are what's called mini humbuckers. And really they're just barely the size of my finger. And so this guitar was designed for a very specific purpose. When Gibson came out with this guitar, they were losing ground to Fender because of their Fender Telecaster guitar, which is seen as the quintessential country sounding guitar. And this guitar has a lot of the same elements that a Fender Telecaster has. And so they were trying to capture that Telecaster sound in a Gibson guitar. So they kind of started with the ES-335 hollow body. And then they went with this semi-hollow body design. You can see that this is an ultra thin, uh, quite a bit thinner than a 335, but it's more solid. So this is all wood under here. So it has a solid body construction with hollow elements in the, in the construction. Very much like a, uh, a Fender Telecaster. So anyway, double humbuck, double mini humbuckers. I think they call this a trapeze tailpiece. Uh, just simple hardware, simple dots. The Gibson logo there. We have the colorized. Uh, those were originally a lot more like white. Those were white. The the pegs, and everything has been has been colored from the tobacco and the age. A lot of these old guitars get a tobacco finish from being played in bars where smoking was allowed. This one really just got that got that finish late in life. <laughs> but um, one of the things that's interesting about this guitar is not just how it sounds and how it feels, um, but there weren't too many of these made 
And uh, serial numbers are kind of weird, so zeroing in on exactly how many of these were made. And well, if you guys know any more about that, please let me know. And um, I'll probably be playing this some more this week while I'm vacationing. And I uh, just, I totally love this guitar. It's got a little bit of, of road rash on the back. The old man had a belt buckle. He always liked having a big flashy belt buckle, even when he wore a suit. And so this has a little what we call belt buckle rash on the back. I've been told it doesn't take away from the, from the, the uh, I don't know, the collectability of this too much. Really, the tobacco finish probably takes away more from the collectability than if it had the original purple untainted finish, that it would be more valuable. But, I mean, that's just what I've been told by a, a novice Gibson guy. But, you know, now that they've stopped making guitars like this, then there's a good possibility that, um, that yeah, we won't be seeing any more of these made, and this could just get worth more and more. But, anyway... So much for the old Marines guitar.